Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to build a simple TCP IP chat client server application in C Sharp. We'll use a lightweight library called TCP Sharp to handle socket communication. And I'll guide you step by step through the full setup, coding, configuration, and testing on a local network. Now let's get started by opening Visual Studio. First, create a new Windows Forms app project for the chat client. Next, create a second project which will be a console app for the server. Now open the server project, then right click the project, select Manage NuGet Packages, and install TCP Sharp. TCP Sharp provides a simple TCP server and client with events for connection, disconnection, and receiving data. It also includes convenient methods for sending strings or raw bytes. Let's open the server's program.cs file and then create a new TCP Sharp socket server on port 9000. You can use any unused port, I just like this one. Next, we need to hook into the server's main events. Attach handlers for on connected, on disconnected, and on data received. These events let the server know when a client joins, leaves, or sends a message. After that, call start listening to begin accepting connections, then keep the console running with an infinite delay so the server stays active. Let's create a dictionary to store online clients. The key is the connection ID and the value is the username. In the server on connected event, simply log the connection. This helps you see when a client joins your server. Next, create a method called update user list. This method gathers all usernames into a single comma separated string and sends that list to every connected client. You can also add a helper method named broadcast message. It sends a message to all clients and logs the same message in the server console. In the disconnect event, we remove the client from the dictionary, update the user list for everyone, and finally print a message saying the client disconnected. Inside the data received event, we first check if the message starts with join pipe. If so, we extract the username, store it, update the user list, and broadcast that the user joined the chat. Next, if the message starts with msg pipe, we split the string to extract the target username and the message text. Then, we look up the target client by their username and forward the message directly to that specific user. And that completes the TCP server. Now let's move on to building the chat client. Now let's open the Windows Forms app project and install TCP Sharp. Next, go ahead and rename Form 1 to FRM Join. This will be the screen where the user enters their username. Then create an obsession class with a single username property. We'll use this to store the username the user enters so the rest of the app can access it.
Now open the Join Form Designer, then drag a label, a text box, and a button onto the form. We'll design a simple layout that lets the user enter their username. Next, double click the join button to create its click event. In this event, we save the username from the form into the username property of our app session. After that, we create the chat form. We add a list box for online users, a rich text box for chat logs, a text box for typing messages, and a send button. Finally, we design a simple and clean chat layout. In the FRM check code behind, we create a static instance property so other parts of the app can access this form. Then in the constructor, we initialize a new TCP Sharp socket client using the server's host and port. Inside the load event, we set the window title to display the username. Then we subscribe to the client's events, connected, disconnected, and data received. Finally, we call connect. Next, create a method named append log. It safely appends text to the rich text box from any thread and automatically scrolls to the bottom. Inside the onConnected event, when the client connects, we enable the send button, write connected to server, and send a join command with the username. Inside the on disconnected event, when the client disconnects, we disable the send button and log a message indicating the disconnection in the data received event. If the message starts with user list vertical bar, we update the list box with all online users. Otherwise, we treat it as a chat message and add it to the logi. When the send button is clicked, make sure a user is selected. 
Then send the message using the format we defined, log it locally, and clear the input box. Finally, we update the program class so the join form runs first and the chat form starts only after the user enters a username and clicks join. And with that, we've completed our TCP IP client server chat application. You can now run and test it. Next, create an app.config file so you can easily change the host and port. Now go ahead and open the command prompt. Run the ipconfig command to find your local IP address. Next, update the host file on each client machine. Now, I'll copy the executable to another computer. I'll also install the .NET framework on that machine so the application can run. For the client machine to connect to the server, you need to allow port 9000 through the firewall Now you can run multiple clients on different computers and chat across your local network. In the next video, I'll guide you through converting this console app project into a Windows service that runs in the background. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss the upcoming videos. See you in the next video.